I'm Paul Gilbertson. I have, was born and brought up in Barry, and most of my working life has been involved either with the railway system at Barry Docks or the Vale of Glamorgan, and also I worked for the Vale of Glamorgan Council towards the end of my working days. I started work here on the railway in South Wales in, in Cardiff in 1960 and transferred on a promotion to Barry, which is my hometown. The location was the goods yard, which handled a lot of the local traders' merchandise. The main property of goods there was coal, but we did handle animal foodstuffs, provender, and I was there for five years in 1968 they closed the yard and transferred me to the goods depot, which is at the old local shed. And there, primarily, the main part of my job was the coal traffic in and out of Abathor, organising staff. It dovetailed with some of the work on Barry Dock, so that was my railway career until 1995. My first location in Barry was at the goods yard which handled the coal traffic for the coal traders delivering coal to the houses around Barry because in those days that was virtually the only form of heating. Um, we used to have probably six or seven major coal companies down here. The main one was W Baker and we also used to have the provender foodstuffs for the farmers of the Vale of Glamorgan which we used to have a lorry, uh, which was a railway vehicle, who would deliver this provender traffic almost daily. Uh, and it was a hive of industry. And subsequently, in my stay at Barry, we, we used to receive large amounts of retired railway locomotives for breaking up. And that is what many people today seem to regard Barry, either Gavin or Stacey or Woodham's engines, but there is a lot more history to Barry than what I have just mentioned now. The history of Barry goes back roughly to when it was created as a town or village, stroke town, in 1884, when the first sod at Barry Docks was dug. But uh, it's difficult to equate it now because I have been here and I've seen this a remarkable transformation. The original building um, has been altered, but the building which is behind us is the only part of the original structure still in existence. All this is new, but uh, it blends in well with the old, the old and the new. But uh, there you are again, it's progress. I was an eager young lad, so I took on the responsibilities and I handled all the documentation in and out of the dock for Geest Industries, who were the major importers of banana traffic into Barry, the coal traffic, which came in from the valleys and West Wales. Also, uh, there was the chemical industry down at the east end of the dock, which was consisted of uh, Dow Chemicals, BP Chemicals, Distrine, they were the main people down that end of the dock. They were subsequently swallowed up and they formed BP Chemicals and I think at the end of the day they altered their name to ICI Chemicals. But Barry was a busy place but now it's very much a tourist location then. So in a space of 50 years, there's been a dramatic change here. And I would say it's something that our parents or grandparents wouldn't have envisaged. When I took up my position, the area where we're sitting now was the running roads, which brought traffic down from the high level sidings between Caddickston and Barry Dock. And they had trains up and down there all day long either service in the goods yard or Woodham's or Dow Chemic or BP Chemicals. Um, it was busy from six in the morning till 
seven or eight at night. And also another form of traffic which was moved from here laterally was the scrap metal recovered from the breaking up of the engines which were under Woodham's instructions to, to break up. But uh, at the end of the day, life was good here. Another form of traffic that was handled down here in the early days of my work in Barry was at Barry Town Station and Barry Island, where we used to have the circuses, Billy Smarts, Chip Chipperfields, um, Bertram Mills, they used to bring their animals down and their tents, equipment, and they used to offload either at Barry Sidings, um, which is now a car park, or at Barry Island. And the other strange thing, the, the goods yard at Caddickson, which was mainly there for the coal traffic, for the people in the Dennis Powers and the Caddickson end of the town, we used to have, on a Saturday, wagon loads of cows or cattle um, coming in, some from Ireland, and they used to be herded up the main street in Caddickston and taken to the abattoir in Court Road, Barry. And it was a strange thing because after we had, uh, I had seen the cows marching up there, the residents used to come out with their shovels and collect up the droppings. But um, this was all in the day's work and uh, we took it for granted. After the railway actually closed down on there, it lay fallow for a few years and it was taken over by a number of small concerns. One was coastal coaches where they were a small firm who ferried children round to school. Um, it was the early days of the school bus service. Um, they were there for a few years and after that um, the Bristol Channel uh, paddle steamers had their headquarters in Gwalia buildings. Along here was uh, the, a running line, it was called Number One Road, and in there wagons which were waiting to go in the shed to wait to be discharged or loaded were stored in this road here. And also in latter days Woodham used to store some of his engines here before they went into the breaker's yard. Down the far end of the building, at the west end, is the elevated part of the building, and in that was the office that I was it used on my days down in 68, 64 to 68. The conditions here were very, very primitive, and just the other side of where that parasol is was a way bridge where road vehicles they were teared in and re-teared going out to they must have the right volume of coal. The main road skirted from the tunnel right across the dock towards Barry Island, it went straight across. I mean, I wasn't here in what would be the glory days because this building, from memory, I think was back to late Victorian or early Edwardian days. Um, and it was built for the Barry Railway Company and then eventually it was taken over by the Great Western Railway, subsequently then British Rail or British Railways, and then it went out for local firms to use before it finally closed down in the 1970s. It's history now, they've gone.